Jake. We're here showing off Galaxy at PAX Prime, and uh, it's getting a lot of attention. You're here on the corner, and it's like there's tons of traffic through here, but I think probably because it looks like so cool, just the art style of it. Um, can you talk about like the inspiration? Yeah, um, you know, I wanted to do a spaceship shooting game for a long time. I grew up playing arcade games. My dad had a pizza parlor as a kid, so I spent you know tons of time playing all the old school shooters. I wanted to go back to sort of the, the classic sort of clean 2D gameplay like that, or a perfect action game. Uh, and instead of just doing something sort of stereotypical spacey, I wanted to do something a little bit more flavor. I remember the Macross explosions being so sexy when I was when I was younger. So I went back and started looking at a bunch of that stuff and realized how much I love that and how ripe that thing is, that whole genre, and how everybody kind of of this generation, you know, a lot of us grew up watching that stuff and it kind of takes you back to your happy spot. So I decided it'd be a great way to, uh, to jump back into that kind of classic sci-fi anime stuff. And uh, it was a perfect world to structure this game in. And then you're doing like a ton of cool stuff with the AI, right? You were telling me yesterday about uh, the system, and, and I think you compared it to Far Cry. I guess if you want to jump in, we can. Yeah, look we. At it. Uh, I love action games, but I love really solid, like modern combat. I like to have some thinking process in my tactics and combat. You know, I love like Far Cry 3, and I love uh, you know I love the Halo games. I love anything where there's really kind of a good one-on-one, -on -one. like anybody can kill you, you know, it's a difficult, kind of challenging combat situation. In most spaceship shooters, it's anything but, right? It's just bullet hell, there's no thought given to whatsoever, like, you know, this is, I like to call it a thinking man shooter, which is silly, because most shooters are literally just blastathons. This, you really need to, especially at the higher levels of difficulty, like, you, you don't want to engage with everybody, like, it's best not to, but you have to, because you're trying to get through this mission, and you're just being confronted by this really smart AI. We've teamed with this company called Sentient, it's a new startup that's doing really cutting edge AI. So I would put the AI in this game up against anything, and up against Far Cry, oh. up against Halo, anybody. I was dying a lot when I played. Why don't you show me how it's done? The right, I'm gonna jump in. So we start off here, this is Beam. You're on the deck of the Excelios. Um, there was a giant treaty that was supposed to be signed with the Imperial Army, and they, it was a big ruse. It was a giant betrayal. Uh, it was a complete ambush. The entire fleet was basically wiped out, except for your fleet. You guys snuck off. You were the last remaining alive pilot for the Starfighters. And so your ship is dying, your ship is losing oxygen, losing fuel, like there's no food, like water, everything. So you're out kind of salvaging through these derelict ships, trying to stay under the Imperial's radar, trying to stay low. You're fighting a lot of the local uh, space raiders. The Imperial uh, are also in the system. There's also these giant space bugs that are very indiscriminate. They will kill and eat anybody. They kill so basically it's this giant jungle of, of just danger and insanity that we have to go in and, and deal with. So here, this is Crash. This shop is something you'll stop into every time uh, before your mission. We start you off with a couple, uh, bit of cash here, a little bit, someone screwed this up already. But I can buy power-ups here, there's passives, there's weapon power-ups, there's all kinds of different stuff we can do here. You can equip your, uh, your loadout here, so we'll have all these weapons. Although it's a roguelike, and it's you know one life, one death, you do, over time, unlock more and more parts to your ship, and more and more passive abilities and more and more weapon upgrades. So you can kind of custom tune your weapon every time you go through this. Then we jump to the hangar and jump out into the uh, into the mission here. So it looks like a spaceship shooter. One of our biggest problems with messaging in this game is it looks like a side-scrolling shooter. The thing is, it's more like asteroids, right? It's like you've got full freedom of motion. Yeah. It's full Newtonian physics. Everything's very physics-driven. You know, It takes a while to kind of get used to the, the feel of everything, but. People seem to really like it once they get used to it, because you've got a lot of responsibility as a player. I mean, it's really kind of an RC airplane, almost. Um, I've got backwards thrusters, I've got forward thrusters, I can stop whenever I want, I've got a boost, I can backwards boost. So just the feeling You're of really flying good around. At that. I was just hitting asteroids left and right. Yeah, the idea of you know being able to kind of fly between these things and like just skimming as close as you can without touching, it's just kind of really pleasurable on its own, right? This is a giant derelict ship. I've got a mission to go in here and destroy a thing. She won't tell me what it is because she doesn't trust me yet. But So these are procedurally generated areas for the mission? These are all fully procedurally generated. I mean, they're hand-tuned rooms full of potential spawn nodes where we could place what makes sense to be a dangerous object or uh, you know some sort of enemy squad or something like that. But I don't know what kind of squad I'm going to get or anything. Can you, can you tell me a little about the story structure? Like, you have seasons, right? And there's missions within each season. Right, so, I mean, Continuing with this sort of anime theme, I'm gonna get out of the way so this guy doesn't see me here. Um, the anime theme is that this is sort of broken down into uh, episodes. So you play, you start off with season one. You've got five or six episodes you've got to play through. There's a, there's a, you know, a story arc over that. You finish the game once and you move on to season two. It's gonna have new story elements, new mission types, new power-ups, 
and it's got its own story arc, and there's a grand story arc over all six seasons. So this, this so is my we, first episode. Yeah, we just we just saw that like huge ship that that's what you're talking about when you're talking about you don't engage everything. Yeah, I mean I'll jump in here to uh, to say hi to show you how it's done here. So these guys have vision cones. They have eyes and ears. You see, I just alerted him. He knows something's up. He didn't see me. He didn't know what it was, but he's looking for something. He's gonna see me and then come right. Oh, there's two of them. Great. <laughs> this is not good. Okay. So as you see these, this is where it looks like a bullet hell, right? But it's like a fully physics-driven bullet hell where you actually have all the capability in the world to dive between these things and kind of start lighting these guys up here. So it's very tactical dogfighting combat. You see, the, the environment is full of all kinds of things I can activate. There's like pipes of fire, stuff to activate, these giant canisters. I mean, it's a very dangerous environment. It's not a place you want to go around just shooting everything yeah. because, ow, that was close. And you've only got two shield bars there and then four health bars. Yeah, and those will recharge. The shields are kind of Halo style. They'll recharge, but the health won't. So I'm going to try to take these guys out and stay behind them as much as possible. There, I've got him. And this is my, uh, my mission objective. I'm here already. We're uh, still tuning a bunch of this stuff, so a lot of it is still missing. Sure. Here's another one I gotta go eat now. No, here's treasure chests. So these treasure chests are gonna be full of all kinds of power ups health power ups, money to spend between missions. Uh, you're gonna pick up passives, you're gonna pick up different weapon upgrades and stuff like that as well. So as I'm kind of just exploring this space, you can see this blue bubble that kind of erupts around me yeah. when I hit the engines. That's sort of my sound radius. So all as right. long as I stay outside of the enemy's uh, state of mind, or uh, Awareness cones, basically, with that sound, they won't see me. I've also got a map, so I can trek in here and see where I need to go, wherever oh, I need nice. to. So I obviously need to go a little bit further to the left to get down. You can see the map in the bottom right corner. I'm trying to find that yellow target objective over there, so I need to find my way there. I know where I need to go, but I need to find my way there. You know, it's an action game, so I didn't want people spending a lot of time backtracking and getting lost and stuff. I have very little patience for that sort of thing, so I wanted it to be something funner than that. So these guys are, are the Space Raiders, right? These are the, uh, the Void Raiders. Their shields will go up as soon as they know I'm here. So the, I'm out of missiles, unfortunately, but the best thing to do is get behind them and start landing them before they have a chance to put their shields up. Ooh. Take the shields down. I got it. There we go. I love those explosions. Again, you know, that Macross sort of early 80s, late 70s era uh, anime. Really stylized explosions and stuff, and I really want to do something that looked like it was hand-drawn. We've gotten more and more 3D over as time has gone by, just for convenience. So there you um, had you had two guys that were fighting each other, right? Yeah, so the all these will just eat anybody. And those turrets will take on anybody too, except for themselves, obviously. So now I just picked up a passive upgrade that makes my engine radius smaller, so I can sneak around better without getting hit. And that juke maneuver you did there where you're coming coming into the sort of 3D plane a little bit. That just dodges any incoming... Yeah, missiles, shots, whatever. These things are dangerous. So this juke will allow you to just momentarily roll out of the gameplay plane. There's uh, obviously it overheats really quickly, so you can't use it you know, right. too much. But it is very powerful in combat. Yeah, watching you play, I can see there's a lot of room to be really, really good at this game. because This is uh, a really low difficulty, too. I mean, this is the very beginning of the game. Yeah. As you watch it, like I like to play at a very high level of difficulty where you're just in constant chaos and you can't engage with everybody. Like You're really choosing your fights. You're trying to lead enemy factions into each other so that they're, like in GTA, when you would lure the different gangs to fight against each other, or in Halo, when you would have the, the Flood fighting against the Covenant. That's one of my most rewarding things I do, is like find a giant bug and have them chase you. I'll have these guys come with me here. Hi, guys. Let's see if I can find some pirates or some bugs. Here's a bug here. So these guys will engage with each other. You see, I'll just let him do my work for me while I focus on this guy. So you can see it's totally physics driven. It really is a dogfighting simulator, more than anything, you know? Timing your shots, understanding your arcs, lining up with these guys, taking them out, picking up his loot, and moving on. Here's my warp out point. Let me squeeze this guy out of the way here. A lot of times the end of a mission is really exciting, so it'll be like a big battle, and all the bullets and everything has physics on it, so everything can knock you back. You gotta stay in this ring for a moment while you warp out. And a lot of times, you know, it's really the heat of the moment. There's shots going everywhere, yeah. knocking you around, and if you warp out at the right moment, it just feels fantastic. So, so there's a bunch of missions in each season. That was, I mean, you're really good at it. So that was probably not necessarily representative of uh, what a new player is going to do in a mission. How'd you do? Six minutes. So here we see our, our clear time for the mission, our enemies neutralized, and we have a kind of a, you know, the spray paint on yeah. the side of the ship. 
of uh, how many units and what type that he took out. So and that jumps us right back in. We go back in to choose our remaining missions and uh, you know try to make your way through five or six episodes per season to to finish the game and move on to the next season. Right. Awesome. So you're, uh, I know you're coming out on PS4 first, but uh, PC soon after, right? PC very soon after. And that's uh, probably, uh, probably end of this first year, early quarter, next year? Probably first quarter. I'm assuming the PC release will probably be around uh, the fourth spring, let's say that. All right. The fourth spring. Well, thanks so much for showing us Galaxy. And if you could, we have this awesome laptop sure. that we're getting signed by everyone to give away. Perfect. Fantastic. Glad you enjoyed the game. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.